Welcome back, it's me Lou, and we are on part two of drawing Scorpion from Mortal Kombat, the video game. So when we last left off, um, I began the inking process. I, when I started, it was a very bare bones pencil. It was not even an illustration, it's more of a, this kind of a layout, just blocked in where the big shapes were. And I kind of went from there, um, it was kind of a gamble, made a couple of mistakes here and there, but it didn't it wasn't enough to like hinder the drawing and I'm just gonna move forward with it so this is where we're at and we're gonna continue the inking process as we speak right now So as we're moving further along um, in the inking phase of the drawing, I got to step away from this for a little bit and I'm looking at it with like um, a little bit of fresher eyes. And I can see some areas that are lacking, some places I could have made improvements upon. But for all intents and purposes, as I stated at the start of this video, this is more so just an exercise of me wanting to be creative and actually get into the process of drawing something. There was no way this was going to look correct um, right off the right off the bat, and I can make peace with that early on, especially when I started off drawing. And the first thing I did was I worked on the hand. And I kind of made a few errors and misjudgments on terms of the proportions and the anatomy of the of the hand, but I think for the most part I was able to make it work. And now we're just moving along. My goal right now is I want to see if I can finish this entire drawing within this this video. I don't. I think that's a, a possibility. I don't think there's. A whole lot to do in terms of detail. A lot of it, I think, is going to be mapping out where the shadow placements are and just kind of applying different values to create some shade, get some gray in there. So the tricky part right now is going to be the head. Um, I kind of told myself I didn't want to go back and uh, pencil it in, or um, pencil it in, so it looked correct. I kind of just wanted to go with what I have here, so. You know, if I start off working on this head, you know, if I draw the eyes too big, it's gonna make the it's gonna kind of dictate the the size of the face, and there's a chance I can make the face too big. I make the eyes too small. Uh, I can make all the facial features kind of disproportionate. So it's a gamble right now, but this whole drawing and experience has been a gamble. So I'm just gonna wing it and see what the results gonna you know, come from this. There's always something to take away from a drawing, you know, whether it comes out the way you want it to or or not. I think you learn more from, just like in life, I think you learn more from your mistakes than from your accomplishments. Because I think when you accomplish stuff, sometimes it might be easier to, like, not, not look back at what you did because you, you might be too consumed with the fact that you got it done. But I think when you come up short... You might be a little bit more critical about what you could have done differently, and I think that's where more growth comes into play.
I'm thinking about adding more texture here to his uniform. Um, just to spicing it up a little. So right now the costume is loosely based off his appearance in the 10th Mortal Kombat game. I believe it was uh, the 10th game. But I'm seeing areas here where I think I'd like to play around with maybe adding some texture. We'll see. Still early on in this drawing. I might pull out one of the other action figures and see what details I can borrow from it and apply to, to this one. So I'm just adding a little bit of muscular definition here. Because I think it's, it's kind of missing some. Like he's a little bit more, um, he can look a little bit more vascular in that area. Right, so examining his face here, he has the face mask, which is going to be here. And he has a kind of a more tight-fitting hood on his head. I kind of want to make draw his hood so it's a little bit looser fitting, just so I can allow it to, I don't know, give it some breathing room and play around with the folds and the, sh and the shapes of the contour. And on his chest up here, he kind of has, looks like some metal plating. But since my drawing isn't, one for one accurate. I think I could, uh, I think I could play around with this a little bit. It looks like there's a collar piece there. Yeah, I'm just gonna play around with this. I, I kind of want it to look. I kind of want to give it my own spin, so I'm just gonna take a couple of liberties here, and just kind of see where it takes me, because. I don't want the drawing to be so completely literal. So I kind of want to break up this area here. I might add a texture. So here's the top of his vest. And it looks like he's kind of wearing some sort of armor underneath. On here it's almost like metal plating. But I kind of want to play with it a little. Maybe make this of a darker value. So I'm thinking maybe adding like some sort of. Kind of like a striped or kind of like a ribbed kind of texture.
And let's do the same for here. I kind of want to... carry on this rib texture and apply it over here. So it looks like maybe this under armor or under shirt kind of carries on more of that pattern. Okay, kind of like that. It kind of it adds a little bit of uh, different visual interest here. Now this, oh, okay, the hood. Now in terms of the layout, I drew his head. I think it's a decent size. I, I might want to make bring it in a little bit smaller, which I don't think it would hurt to make the head smaller than making it larger. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna frame where his face is first. Now this is kind of a gamble because I don't necessarily know where everything's going to be placed. So Okay, this shape's kind of working for me. Doesn't look perfect, but I, I think I, I could live with this. I'll just work myself. I'll just work work around this. I want to get the head drawn in next. Um, or at least get the face drawn in. But the important thing right now is just trying to... Right, so right now I'm just really trying really hard to visualize where his eyes are going to be. Because I think that's going to... That's what's going to really make or break whether or not I get this face down right. Because I've seen some artists... I think like... For example, like David Finch. He, he does some really beautiful... Um, not only painted... I mean, he's not mostly known for his complex stuff. I've seen some of his painted work. He does beautiful painted work in his... Comic book artworks, this is amazing, the way he renders things. But every now and then, I'll catch a drawing. And this isn't a criticism by any ways, but the head might be the right size in terms of proportion of the body, but then the face might be too large on the head, if that makes any sense. So that's what I'm kind of worried about here. I'm kind of worried that the head might be, the shape and size of it might be correct, but then when I place the facial features, it's going to look too big on the, on the, the face is going to look too big on the head. I want this drawing to have an almost untraceable quality. Now when I say that, what I mean to say is that if you tried to break it down into basic shapes and forms um, to its most basic structure, it'd be hard to do. I want this to be something that it would be harder for someone to, you know, duplicate. Because there's some artists where you can really, they work in such a, uh, it's almost kind of like a, not routine, but maybe, um, there's almost like a, a theory to the way they work. And if you understand like the way they proportion their figures and how they lay it out, I, like you know, some some comic book artists they always draw the same underlying body skeleton for every character they do, and then so it's much easier to break down their drawing and deconstruct it. Whereas some artists, uh, they you know, they might just start drawing with a hand and work from there. 
and build the drawing organically. And then I think a drawing like that's harder to um, duplicate and imitate because you, you, it's not it's not something that you like. It's not theoretical. You can't apply like any sort of weird theory to it or break it down into uh, certain steps because the guy's drawing very organically. And I think the more organic the a drawing is, the harder it is to replicate. So I think th that's what I kind of want to do he with this. You know, whether or not that's successful is a completely different story, but. So we're going to place his eye. Now, I got to get this right, because if I don't, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> right, so this here, we'll have this here. Now, the thing with Scorpion is that you never see um, his pupils because he's kind of an undead character, so you always just see the whites of his eyes. So I can leave his eyes kind of like blank like this. All right, so I'm, I'm happy with the eye placement. Uh, where they're placed, the angle they're on. It's starting, to, it's working. I can kind of make sense of this drawing. Let's get the brow drawn in. And then his ear is going to be placed somewhere here. Now there's only going to some, I kind of messed up in a sense that I should have drawn this hood. I, I can still fix that, fix that. I should have drawn this hood down just a little bit more. cover up this part of his face but I don't think that's gonna happen all right let's just get his mask drawn in at least Okay, uh, I really want to play around with this hood a little, but I, I don't want to commit to this line here because I think too much of his face is exposed on this side. So I'm going to take a gamble and I'm going to drop it down just a little bit more like this. And I'll correct this by this bring it into um, shadow. We'll just cast a heavier shadow on it. All right, so there's a chance I could have messed this up here, but I'm not sure yet. Well, we won't know until I actually, until I actually go over this part. Because I just kind of drew a bunch of lines where I was going to block in the shadows in the darker bits.
I kind of felt bad doing this drawing in the sense that, you know, Mortal Kombat's a hot thing right now. And I don't want to come off like I'm this... Like, you'll see videos when people dress topics that they might not normally be into, but it's hot at the time. And, you know, it'll garner more interest and more views. And I don't want people to think that I'm just drawing um, Scorpion because Mortal Kombat's relevant. You know, for me, Mortal Kombat's <laughs> relevant, like, all the time. So, you know, not only am I still into, like, the old video game, I fire that up probably, like, you know, once or twice a month. But I, I'm still a very avid collector of the, act, of the new Mortal Kombat action figures. And the original movie is still one of my favorite movies. And very often I'll just watch the trailer for the original movie because I like it that much. And I have the original CD for, um... The single with the, the original Mortal Kombat song on it. And I give that listen very often. Okay, this is working. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. We're going to be finishing this up, hopefully, in, within this this one segment. I'm really looking forward to this, you know, after doing this head, fleshing out the finer details of the drawing. So with these YouTube videos, I hit a milestone yesterday. Like, um, so I've been I've had a YouTube channel for a long time, um, but it's not it's nothing I've never like regularly updated or said I wanted it to be an actual channel channel until this like a month ago. It was a place originally for me just to share you know the occasional video of me riding BMX or just some random thing from a concert or whatever. Like a month ago, I saw I was watching some YouTube videos and I'm like, you know what? I think it'd be fun to actually create a YouTube channel. Even if it wasn't a long-term thing, I kind of set a goal for myself, and I just told myself, even if I, I just want to have at least 50 videos on my YouTube channel, so I can kind of officially call it channel, and that it's kind of cool to know that I have a, a somewhat presence, you know, with a limited amount of content, but this stuff that I felt was going to be quality, not necessarily in terms of production, but if there was enough quality content on there for people to like, that would interest them, whether it be drawing or talking about toys or just random things. That was my goal. I wanted to have a, by June, I wanted to have 50 YouTube videos up there. And when I say 50, I meant 50 new videos. Prior to that, I think I had to might, might have had at least 10 just random YouTube videos from over the years. But last month, I'm like, okay, the goal is by June, I want to have at least 10 new videos on there. And I think last night I uploaded my uh, ep episode number 51 so i had 51 videos and i finished a month ahead of schedule and i told myself if i hit that landmark i'd see if i could at least get 100 videos on my channel by december so we'll see where this takes me i'm not burned out with this process yet or creating these videos it's fun um you know i have a handful of friends who watch them and just knowing that they're watching it makes this worthwhile for me uh, it's like I said from the start, I was never about doing this just to get likes and follows or whatever, but I just wanted to set goals for myself because I think you learn a lot about what you can accomplish and who you are by, you know, setting goals and attaining them. And it, it helps build up, you know, a good work ethic and it carries over into your other life as well. Like after this started working out well for me, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get back into just like working out again because I used to work, I used to be an avid I used to work out like all the time, like six to seven days a week. And I've been doing that for, you know, for almost 30 years, but I got hurt not too long ago. Um, and I spent most of this past year or most of last year just being hurt all the time. So my fitness and my workout routine took a big hit because of that, but I'm feeling a little bit better now. And I'm like, okay, would seeing as I was able to accomplish my goal of, you know doing these videos on a daily basis i'm like why can't i do that in terms of my like other parts of my personal life so i'm like i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna take up working out again and if i could do something with that cool you know at least gives me a reason to work out and be healthy and get back in shape okay so we have this here's a face mask um I'm kind of wondering if I should draw on the face mask a little bit lower.
Yeah, I could I could cheat. There's a way I could cheat cheat that. I'll just give them the face mask kind of like a trim. And that way I could bring it down a little just with that extra line. And then we can have this be his bottom of his neck. So Scorpion's mask kind of has like these, almost like a like a grill on the inside in this kind of pattern. So I'm just going to draw that in here. And there's a couple of slits in his mask. And it looks like he has some armor plating on the inside as well. We'll get that drawn in. Okay, this looks good. All right, so what we have here is not finished by any means, but it's all the major bits of Scorpion's kind of fleshed out. Let's get his, I forgot his eyebrows. Let's get his eyebrows in. Right, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to erase the pencils so I can start getting to the fun part where it's just kind of, for me anyways, adding the, bring some value into the drawing, creating some areas of gray, amping up the contrast where it needs to be done, adding a little bit more finer detail. I kind of wish I did more drawing videos during the week. 
like when I first got into the YouTube stuff more seriously, I was cranking out anywhere between like four to six videos a week, sometimes three times a day. And but when I started doing some of my more recent drawings, it was more about just creating quality content in terms of the drawing. It wasn't about doing these fast speed kind of drawing deals or stuff that was sketchy. I wanted to create more refined and more detailed pieces and I wanted everything to be a little bit more intentional and a little bit more purpose. I wanted these to be a lot more finished renderings as opposed to being just plain fast sketches. And the way I kind of you know came about doing that I decided you know since we're breaking these some of these drawings down like this and the Wolverine one to multiple parts I could spend that first episode or two being more concerned about creating a dynamic figure and doing what's more so you know the sketch phase of the drawing and when I draw the videos out longer into like multiple parts you know I could devote much more time to the, the details and the little nuances and just refining it and making it look pretty. I still need to revisit that Wolverine drawing because I do want to color it and I said I was going to do it digitally but that video has so many parts, it's five parts that I didn't want to get back to it anytime soon. I think, you know, I, I just want to give some, give it some space between myself and it and you know come back to it with fresher eyes and just a different mindset. I think I got most of the pencils off.
Yeah, so I'm really liking what's coming out here. This looks cool. It's really clean. The line works nice and crisp. Yeah, there's gonna be some fine detail inside of his um, his mask right here. All right, that looks, his face looks nice. I can live with this. All the details are in. Now let's work on some of these other parts of the drawing. Let's work on these buckles. Let's give them a little bit of some shine and some depth. One thing I've learned about drawings is that sometimes even just adding a simple line could change something. You know, there's something like this could look so flat, fat, ah, so flat and plain, but the minute you just add one or two lines, it kind of like really just brings it out and makes it sing.
I'm kind of disappointed in this. Nah, I can fix that. Let's just bring it up more. <sighs> kind of made a mistake here, but I'm just going to bring the line up more and correct it. I apologize for like this for clamming up a little on this really trying to think about this drawing <laughs> trying to make sure I don't mess it up Right, we got that done. Let's figure out the rest of his hand.
I'm still wondering how I'm going to render out this vest here. Because I've, I've created so much intricate line work around here. If I do something, it's going to just flatten this out. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of thought. Let's add some shade work here. This drawing feels a little bit um, cleaner and a little bit more refined than my Wolverine one. I love the Wolverine one um, and that Captain America one I drew recently. Those are really clean drawings. But I think this one has a slight edge over the Wolverine. Now, the Wolverine I think is a little bit more dynamic and it's a little bit more proportionally correct, but this one just, right now just feels cleaner. The, the line work feels a little bit more mindful. like the Wolverine drawing, part of me is, I'm really liking how this is coming out that I might want to color this in the future. I still have yet to decide how I want to do the Wolverine one. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do that in Photoshop so I could record some audio over it or just do a time lapse in Procreate and just throw some music in the background.
Okay, um, whew, uh, I'm trying to think. Okay, I think for the most part he might be done. Um, I don't want to really mess around with this anymore. I mean, at least because I think for the most part I have all the forms in, all the details in, everything that needs a little shade and shadow kind of has that done, and there's a perfect balance of contrast. The detail's not too heavy. I might be able to wrap this up and say we're done. But I do want to just give them somewhat of a background. Where's my ruler? Okay, so this is going to be black. It's going to be black. It's going to be black. Black. Now I'm not sure if I'm working at a faster pace because looking at this drawing, I'm kind of wondering if the Wolverine one really needed to be five parts because I was able to do this one in two. I was able to do this one in two with less of a drawing to work with. So I don't know, unless I'm just feeling a little bit more comfortable now. It's nice to see the progression in the work. You know, if you compare like the first video I did, the Venom, followed by some of the drawings I did towards the middle, like maybe the Spider-Man to something like this in the Wolverine. It's, there's a sense of growth, which I can appreciate. And it, it's, I think it's important to feel that way as an artist. You know, you're not just spinning in circles or whatever, doing the same thing over and over again, not necessarily plateauing. You might do a, a piece that every now and then might that might set you back, like mentally or emotionally. But it's always nice to know that there's some progression in your work, whether it means you're working faster or 
you're achieving much more of a desired result of what you want to see in your in your completed piece. There's a greater sense of satisfaction in producing a drawing that looks a lot more how you envision it. Like I like doing the sketch stuff, like the faster videos where you know I might sketch something out in like 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But I don't know the amount of satisfaction I get from doing something like this, where it's really clean and it just feels I don't know. This, there's a different feeling to it. You know, it's like I'm really investing my time in something, having it pay off. Whereas with the speed, the faster, speedier drawings. I mean, I have a sense of accomplishment at the end, but it's so much easier to, to you know, take a couple steps back away from those kind of drawings than, you know, when you're well removed from it for maybe like an hour or two, look back and say, man, I, I see you know, so many places I kind of messed up or could have took my time on and made it look better. Where's this? I mean, I made a couple of mistakes, but I think by the time all said and done, I was able to pull together the drawing and kind of you know, salvage it where it needed to be salvaged and hide mistakes where they needed to be hid.
That'll be done probably like in five minutes. I need to open the windows. These markers are, just, man, they're giving me a headache. Looking back, I'm almost embarrassed by some of my other drawings because I kind of wish they were all at this level. Like the first Wolverine drawing I did, I keep, every time I look at it, I just start, I just cringe. I'm like, the quality of that drawing is so not like what I normally draw, but I think I was happy with it at the time because I did it in such a, you know, at a brisk pace. But looking back at it, I hate the face. I don't like the line I used on that drawing. You know, there's some drawings like this. It's like, I love the line work. If I could draw like this every day, I'd be so happy. There's such a feeling of satisfaction too for me because, you know, as I, as I discussed earlier in these videos that I like to make these drawings up as I go along. That's why I sometimes work with such a loose under sketch. And just to see the final drawing, I'm like, wow, this, you know, for one, I didn't really have an image in my head of what this final drawing would look like. I, I mean, I have an inkling of the pose and stuff, but it really is this kind of making it up as I go along and when I see the completed piece and if it comes out at a level that kind of exceeds my expectation I just I just feel awesome and I'm like I gotta do another one and I think that's the important thing you know when you have that feeling that you, oh I want to do another one and then you become more productive and then you just want to keep on doing more and more and more it's almost like the same way like if you do a bad drawing you're like I never want to pick up a pencil again Wow, this, this marker is really letting off some fumes, this big one. Alright, this paper is really soaking up the ink, but it's not as dark in some areas as I'd like it to be. Oh wow, very happy, very, very happy with this. Um, completely exceeded my expectations. You know, if you watched the first video, Early on, I, I kind of make a mistake when I'm drawing the hand. And I could have given up and chucked out the drawing and started all over. But it's like I said, I just wanted to commit to this. And I knew if I could commit to it and give it a certain level of consistency across the drawing, it, it would cover up my mistakes. And the whole thing would have some flow to it. And I think I achieved that. It's not my greatest drawing in the world, but... For what it is, I'm very happy. Very happy. So here we are. We have Scorpion. One of the stars of the Mortal Kombat franchise. You've seen him in video games. You've seen him in movies. There's a the new movie that's on HBO Max and also in theaters. It's awesome. And so we started off being inspired by... This guy, Scorpion, and here's another version of him. And here's the final illustration. I am very happy with this. So, uh, thank you for joining me on this long-handed journey to get this guy done. I hope you pulled something away from this, as I have. And uh, I encourage you to draw or sketch anytime you get the chance. You know, you might learn something about yourself. And it's good for us building up good habits and establishing goals and micro goals and just, I don't know, having some focus in your life. So once again, my name is Lou. And today is the 24th of April 2000. 
2021. Wow, 2021. It's been a long time. All right, so thanks for joining me. Um, take care and enjoy your day, and I will see you soon in another video. Bye now.